Good evening. How are you? One person said good. That's, that's, that's not the rest of you. Okay. So this evening, I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, about a little bit about my personal testimony. I've been uh, going through things back and forth in my mind. Sometimes the Lord works on you, and you know how that is. You get up, you think you're going to preach one thing, and it's like, nope, we're going to talk about something else. So we're going to talk about something else today. Um, one of the most favorite things I get a chance to do about once or so a year is to go home with mom and dad and my brother and my sister. And there's no better place to be than mom's kitchen. It's the center part of the house. It's my favorite room no matter what house I'm in. The kitchen is my favorite room. Pantry being the second favorite room that, that, that's there. That's ex exactly right. Yeah, and sometimes I get the two confused. Um, but several years ago, on a Sunday morning, uh, I was home. And I think it was for Thanksgiving. And generally at our house, I'm not sure about yours, but Saturday mornings and Sunday mornings are a little bit slower. We, we drink our coffee a little bit more slowly. We have good conversation. And that particular morning, I remember standing in the kitchen with my mom and we were talking. I think Dad was, uh, he was in the, the den watching a, something on television. Or mom and I were talking in the, in the kitchen. And we just began to, to, to look back and then talk about how much God had blessed our our family. And sometimes we just need to do that. Go back and reflect and see all the ways that the Lord has provided for us. And sometimes we can't see those when we're, when we're standing still looking forward. We can only see them when we get a chance to maybe sit down and look back. Although I don't recommend you drive looking only in the rearview mirror. <laughs> so every once in a while we need to look forward. But um, one of the things that, that we were talking about uh, for, for us and our family and um, was just the way the Lord has blessed us through a lot of medical things. And I know a lot of our people go through medical issues and, and, and challenges in life. And so we were talking about that, and, and I obviously was born with, a, with some uh, anomalies. A lot of surgeries have happened, not a lot, but more sometimes than one or two have taken, have taken place. Um, but one of the things that has always been constant, though, and we were talking about this earlier, Jay, was... Uh, was uh, I have heart problems. I don't know a person who's alive who doesn't have a heart problem. If we're Christians, God, heart problems been solved. If we're not Christians, we still have a heart problem, right? So it's it's all a heart problem that we have. Um, but when I was uh, young, very young, um, I started seeing a cardiologist. I was at the age of three when I began to see a cardiologist. Um, before that happened, there were two men, I'm going to talk to you about them just very, very briefly. One of them was my pediatrician at home. His name was Dr. Prince, and he was a prince of a guy, okay? And my cardiologist's name was Dr. Spock, uh, way before Star Trek even got started. Yeah, he was, yeah. And so before I was born, God had seen fit to put these two men together. They both met at Duke University Medical School. And they didn't know each other at the time. And so when I came along many years later, um, I had a couple of things wrong uh, with, with my heart. One of them was I had a hole that refused to close. And so they had to wait till I got older to close that. Um, but there was also another underlying program, problem, which we'll get to in a second. Um, but Dr. Prince began to write letters to Dr. Spock and say, I've got this, this young man and I, I need you to take a look at him. And I still have copies of those letters that were written in 1968 or so, way before you were born, right, Brady? <laughs> right, yeah. And, and I'll read those every once in a while. I'm like going, wow. But it amazes me how sometimes God goes before us, and I'll tell you about that, what I mean, here in a second. So I began to see uh, Dr. Spock and, 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 and he at Duke, and it was determined that, yes, I did have a problem with a hole and that eventually was going to have to have surgery. But I wasn't young, I mean, I wasn't old enough, so they had to wait uh, until I was 11 years old to do that. What I didn't realize at that time was that all the doctors that I saw at Duke, at the, when we went, Dr. Spock was the head of pediatric cardiology and an incredible researcher. He's still, he's, unless I am mistaken, uh, he's 95 years old, and his last research paper that I found on, on the web was like maybe 12 years ago. He's still churning them out. Um, anyway, he, 
he began to put together a team that were handpicked for me. Um, and so the, the surgeon who eventually did the surgery was the first pediatrician, first pediatric cardiology, or first pediatric surgeon that Duke University ever hired. Um, the, the, the team that did my catheterizations were all heads and top-notch doctors in, in their respective fields at Duke. And so, you know, all I did was show up. <laughs> and that was, I had the easy part. I just got to go to sleep through the whole thing. But once the surgery was, was completed, um, there was another problem. And they had known about that problem since the time I began to go to Duke at three, at, age of, at the age of three. And my EKG was different and it still is different. It's uh, kind of wild when you look at it and it's like, no, and I'm like, no, it's okay, don't worry about it. I've had to calm several doctors and say, no, it's okay, don't worry about it. Don't pass out on me, it's gonna be okay. <laughs> and, and, and so with that, they were anticipating that something would eventually happen, but they didn't tell us that, and we're very grateful for that because it was, it was hard enough being able to go out and do stuff. Mom and Dad would lock me in a cage if they'd known something was, was going to happen. And so it did happen at the age of 16. Um, we'd been out playing uh, neighborhood football, and uh, I came back in and, and get ready to go to bed, and my heart was just racing. Um, and we were at about 250 beats per minute, and it wouldn't quit, which I didn't want it to quit. I wanted to slow down, but I didn't want it to quit. <laughs> And, and so we went to my, um, my GP there at home, and he gave me a quick shot and, uh, in his office there, and it reduced to 120. Still fast, but not as fast. And by the time we got back to his office, a five-minute drive from his home, it had gone back to 250. Um, and so long story short, it, we ended up going to the local hospital, ended up uh, visiting the the paddles, you know, I'd rather get, I'd rather get heartburn eating Italian than, than to do it that way, but we, we, we did, um, and we got back to Duke. When we got to Duke, my mother was, mom and dad are both great, but Dr. Spock was waiting for us when they rolled me in, and, and mom said, I have never been so happy to see somebody in my entire life, and I'm thinking, what am I, you know, <laughs> you know what, 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 what am I, you know, so, but here's what he said, he said, we have known everything that has been happening with Blake since it started. Don't worry. So they, they found the problem. The problem was at that time, it was an extremely rare arrhythmia. Um, at the time that they found it, due, there were five recorded cases in the world with it, and I was the youngest person. Um, if you want that notoriety, I'll let you have it. <laughs> Um, but they decided that medication would work, and so I've been doing medication for the last 47, 47 years. Now, with that, as I got older, of course, I grew out of a pediatric cardiologist and had to go to an adult cardiologist. And so, once again, handpicked right at Duke, and uh, we were together for a long, long time. I wanted to go to France. Uh, you can imagine now. Now that you know what you know about me, and you're my mom and dad, and I say, I want to go to France, your answer is going to be, Marcy, what's it going to be? No, exactly, yeah. Marcy, you're so much more, you're so much, as we'd say in North Carolina, so much more nicer than, than my dad. My dad said, absolutely not. And I said, okay, you know, so, but I, I learned, the, I learned the, 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 the secret of the grist mill, right? You just kind of wear people down, right? <laughs> and you elicit people on your side, right? So we went to see, uh, it was time for a checkup at Duke, and I went to see Dr. Gallagher, and I said, Dr. Gallagher, I wanna go to, to, to France. And he said, I think it'd be a great idea. <laughs> to which my dad said, what? You know? <laughs> and, and he said, where are you gonna go? I said, I'm gonna be studying in the, I wanna go to the city of Montpellier, which is where our college had a program for one year. He said, I happen to have a good colleague there, you'll be just fine, don't worry about it. <laughs> Dad was not happy. <laughs> so we just kept going, and, and eventually that I got to go to France. Didn't have any problem that first year. So after I finished college and did some grab work, and went back to France for another year to uh, teach English at a university uh, there. And so um, uh, I was at the, in the city of Nice on the Riviera. Not a bad place to vacation or to work, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> and um, I saw Dr. Gallagher before I left, and, and he said, um, if there's a problem, he said, you need to go to the cardiothoracic center in Monte Carlo. And I'm like, oh, hi, Monte Carlo, right. 
And it just happened that there was a physician, two physicians that were there, that, and he actually, they had asked him to come. He was on staff at that hospital training them. So he said, I'll take your records, and when you get over there, don't worry about it. So I said, okay. So I got over to France, got settled in, went to Monte Carlo, met the doctors, thought, okay, we've met, shake hands, it's great. Um, you know, had a croissant together, a cup of coffee, and we were, we were fine. I did not realize until later, or it would be later, it would be uh, March of that year, I woke up in a pretty rapid heartbeat and uh, had to call a local cardiologist for an EKG. It was like 3 o'clock in the morning. All this is done in French now, by the way. And, and the guy comes to my apartment, and there are two ways to say good luck in French. One of them is bon courage, which means very encouraging. The other one is bonne chance, which means good luck. You know, he left, the cardiologist leaves my apartment, bonne chance. And I was like, great, excellent. So I had to check myself in to, the, to, the, to, to Monte Carlo and uh, do a catheterization and do the whole thing. And, and uh, since Dr. Gallagher was on staff there, our insurance covered it at 100%. And I thought, that's really, that was excellent. Um, but I thought, but they asked me to translate all of the documents from French into English so they could come and file the insurance. And I thought, better not cost anything. You know, what do you get my bill for having done this? I'm sick and I'm having to do your job. No, I don't think this is fair. So we go through all of that. And then I decided to come to seminary. Well, by the time, by this time, Marcy, my dad's used to me telling him, I'm going to go places. And so it's no longer no, it's just like, Okay. <laughs> and when I went to see Dr. Gallagher, I said, Dr. Gallagher, I'm going to be going to seminary. He said, where? And I said, I'm going to be going to Southwestern in, in, in Fort Worth. And he said, okay. Um, he said, I said, I need a cardiologist. And, I, and uh, I said, and you know as well as I do, I can't get a cardiologist. I don't change cardiologists like I'm changing my socks. He said, no, I understand that. He said, bring me your insurance information and I'll find you a cardiologist. And I said, no, you give me the cardiologist. I'll find the insurance. I said, and we'll do it that way. And he said, okay. So he told me right then, he said, hands down, gave me the doctor's name. He said, yeah, she's in Dallas. And he said, over any other doctor or cardiologist that I know of in the field, he said, you go see her. And I said, you write the letters, send the, send the, the records, and I'll be there. And so she and I have been together now for 20, 25 years that, that I've been here. Um, and uh, I don't need a second opinion because she was hand chosen as well by him. And so I told her one day, I said, look, I said, if, and I said, if you were, and I were Catholic, I said, this would be apostolic succession. Do you understand? And she said, I agree with you. And, and I told her, she said, that after the first time I visited with her, she said, do you have anything to say to me? Do you have any questions? And I said, I have no questions. I said, but I do have one statement to make to you. And she said, well, what is it? I said, well, the last woman I gave my heart to broke it. I said, in your profession, you don't have that choice. I said, you don't have that options. And so, so far, she's taking care of it. So, and with the Lord's help. Now, why am I standing here telling you all of this? One, it's because I can tell you, and I'm going to share a scripture with you in a few moments here, that God takes care of us. He doesn't take care of us minute by minute. Now, when I say that, he, he does. But before I was born, Dr. Prince and Dr. Spock, before they met each other, all the way down the line, I would need these people in this place at this time before I even showed up. We live in a world where people say, man, that's luck. In my experience, there's no such thing. There is no such thing as luck at all. And so I'm going to share a passage of Scripture with you. You'll recognize it. I'm not going to read the whole thing to you, um, although the whole thing is wonderful, but it's from David's Psalm 139. He said, You made all my delicate inner parts. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. I like the way this is put. You, know, you made all my delicate parts and inner parts in my body, and you knit me together in my mother's womb. Thank you 
for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous, and how well I know it. You watched me as I was being formed in utter seclusion. As I was woven together in the dark of the womb, you saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out, even before a single day had, had passed. How precious are your thoughts about me, O oh God. They are innumerable. I can't even count them. They outnumber the grains of sand. When I wake in the morning, you are still with me. I think we need to understand a few things as good Christian people. God is either who he says he is or he's not. He either loves us or he doesn't. He provides for us or he doesn't. We either believe in him or we don't. But I am here to tell you that no matter what you are facing in life, no matter what happens, no matter what we're worried about tomorrow, God is already there. From the time that Dr. Prince and Dr. Gallagher and Dr. Spock and Dr. Hurwitz and Dr. Oldham all came together, God has been in every one of my tomorrows. A couple of weeks from now, I'm going to have to go back to see my cardiologist and we're going to be putting in a pacemaker. And I appreciate the church's prayers. Y'all have been great and wonderful. And I am not worried about that. Although some people say, are you not worried? I'm not worried. God's already in a couple of weeks from now. He's already in the very room that we're going to be in. And he's already made sure that whatever happens, we're going to be okay. So I want you to pray with me this, mor oh, this morning. Listen, I've, oh, it's been a long day at the university today. <laughs> pray with me this evening. And I just want to tell you how much I love you and I thank God for you for this church. The reason that I am here in this place, I think, was also because God called me. But medically, the reason I came to Dallas is because, or Fort Worth is because this is where I needed to be for this moment. I did not know this time would be coming 25 years ago when I came here. I'm not sure what the next 25 years will, will hold, but I'll find out. Would you join me in prayer? Father, we thank you for this day. Father, we thank you for your mercies. Father, we thank you for your grace. And Father, we thank you for your thoughts toward us and for the ways you care for us. And Father, we thank you that you are in every tomorrow that we will have. Father, that nothing escapes your, your notice. Father, that even when sparrows fall and you know it, how much more precious are we in your sight. Father, I thank you for the time we spend together. I thank you for your word. I thank you for your promises. I thank you for your safekeeping. But most importantly, Father, I thank you for Jesus who came and gave his life, that we might spend eternity with you. Bless us now, for we ask in Jesus' name. Amen.